This is the Echo 30A7 SP Ocean Star, one of the strongest options for people looking to get into the higher end of the mechanical market on a budget. It features real Cherry MX brown switches, although blue ones are also available, ninja printed PVT keycaps, and this unique looking blue and white color scheme. Echo actually reached out to me and asked if I wanted to try this board, and as soon as I saw it, I knew I had to give it a look. Full disclosure, they did send me this board for free, but as usual, they haven't paid me to say anything in this review, it's completely my own. Now that we got the disclaimer out of the way, let's take a look at this keyboard. First of all, as always, let's take a look at what we've got in the box. Inside the box that features a cardboard sleeve, nice touch by the way, we have a very well protected keyboard with a plastic guard as well as a wrap always nice to see because it just adds to that premium experience. We also have some modified accent keys in case you want more white ones instead of the dark navy blue ones that ship with the keyboard, a fancy keycap puller that looks to be shaped like a cat paw, and a USB-C to USB-A cable with a latch on it so it can be more snugly plugged in, a really good point for build quality, and of course as usual the last thing you get in the box is the manual. I honestly really think Akko have outdone themselves with this box, not only do you get a second set of modifier keys but you also as I said get a really nice wire key puller which is great if you don't want to damage your keycaps. Overall I am very impressed with the unboxing experience and if everything else is as good as this then well we're in for a treat. Moving on to the specs this is a TKL layout keyboard which is probably my second favorite out of all the keyboard layouts because it's so convenient to have arrow keys for when you're editing. Seriously the difference in having arrow keys and not having arrow keys is absolutely massive when you're editing but it's not bulky enough that it becomes a massive presence on your desk. I personally really like the size of this keyboard and think it's a nice balance between being too big and being too too small to be functional. Following this, we have the build quality, which is really quite good. It is mostly made of plastic, but damn, does this thing ever have some weight to it? always a good sign. I'm going to be talking more about the build quality of the individual components later on, but from the shielded USB-C port to the PBT keycaps, this thing is built to last. Next, we have the switches, which are genuine Cherry MX browns in my model, but you can also get this thing with Cherry MX blues, and I've even seen some sites selling this thing with MX reds, so you do get a few choice for your switches. If you're new to mechanical keyboards, MX browns are fairly light, tactile, and quiet, MX blues are clicky, fairly light and loud, and MX reds are light, linear, so there's no bump, and also quiet. In terms of pure switch feel, I actually prefer Gatoron switches, but there's one area that Cherry really excel in, and that would have to be build quality. Cherry make really solid switches, and they've been doing so since 1953, so you also get the legacy of a quality product. They feel solid, and as advertised, tactile, have minimal wobble, and are just generally good. Not much else I can really say here. In general, Cherry MX Browns are solid switches. Following this, we have the stabilizers, and yes, they are indeed red. I did manage to track them down, and they are most likely just generic plate mounted stabs. Despite this though, they're not actually that bad. They certainly do their job in keeping the modifier stable and I've only really found the space bar to rattle which is a quick fix and if I use this as my main keyboard I'll most likely be replacing these with some ever trusty GMK screw and stabs anyway so it's not really a huge deal for me and they don't rattle all that much. Moving on, now we have connection. This is a wired keyboard with a USB-C to USB-A cable which I always like to see and something I especially like about this cable in particular is the groove to fit into the built in one on the case. I really like this because not only are you less likely to knock your cable out by accident, but you're also less likely to damage your port because it's properly tucked away. I was a little concerned that it would affect the way I use my custom cables, but throughout my tests, I found that they all work fine. The keycaps are PBT at a pretty good thickness and are actually ninja printed, which is when the characters are printed on the front of the keycap rather than the top, a look that I actually really like. This might be personal preference, but I honestly think it looks awesome. These are also die sublimated, which is honestly amazing because in short, it means they last a really long time. The colors also match the ocean theme of the keyboard with the modifier keys being dark blue and slash or white, and the alphanumeric as well as half the function keys are a light blue. I personally really like the color scheme of this keyboard and overall I am very satisfied with the keycaps. The Ocean Star is actually a pretty nice keyboard to use. It has two levels of incline helping you reduce strain on your wrists, rubber feet to stop it slipping, and the keycaps are flush with the case which in my opinion just gives it a cleaner look. Now this section was originally going to be how modular of this keyboard is, we we're going to take a look at the PCB, maybe change some switches around, but in all of my searching I couldn't find a single screw on this keyboard so I couldn't get it open. The lack of screws may be visually pleasing, but it makes modularity incredibly different or even impossible. I mean, I don't know yet, as I said, I still haven't found my way into this keyboard. If I find a way in the future I'll put it as the pin comment, but as of now, yeah, I have no idea. If anybody else owns this keyboard and is watching this, please tell me how to open this thing up. So yeah, ergonomics, good. Modularity, 
not so user friendly. Okay, so we're coming to the end of the video now and it wouldn't be a proper keyboard review without a sound test. So let's take a listen to how this keyboard sounds. So, while this certainly isn't the cheapest mechanical keyboard on the market, coming in at just under $100, in my opinion, it's a nice step into the higher end of the mechanical keyboard market, trading off things like RGB lighting for colored keycaps, and using some good quality switches and printing methods, while still costing a lot less than many other gaming keyboards. So I do definitely recommend this keyboard, but, not for a first time keyboard user. I'd say this is more of a second keyboard. If you want a first mechanical keyboard, I recommend checking out the Magic Force 68 or the Aseni 60%. I've linked both videos up there. Wouldn't be one of my videos if I didn't do that. But if you are looking into the higher end of mechanical keyboards, then this is a fantastic budget option. All right, so thank you for hanging out with me today. Remember to like the video if you want to see more content like this and smash that subscribe button. I'm done for now and I'll see you guys in the next one.